Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our HTML service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. I'm incredibly excited to give this video because we're going to be learning an extremely important topic in Apps Script web application development and in the world of web development at large and that is templates and scriptlets. So if you're familiar with certain template engines such as EJS or Handlebars or Jade then these, this, these topics are going to be very familiar to you, but if you're not, the first question to ask is what is a template? So a template is basically, or an HTML template is basically anything that has these special tags which are called scriptlets in it. So um, the next, I guess, natural question is, well, what is a scriptlet? A scriptlet is a special HTML tag. It's not an official HTML tag, but um, if you have a template, you can inject these things called scriptlets which allow you to run server-side JavaScript within the angle brackets. So that is pretty powerful. You can combine both your JavaScript and HTML in the same file, and then you can have it run once before the HTML is actually loaded. So it only runs once, but still an incredibly powerful thing. We're going to see an example of all three of these scriptlets in the code later in the video, but let me just give a quick overview of them now. So the standard scriptlet it basically just allows you to run the code, and um, that's about it. So it's pretty standard, but that's why they call it standard scriptlet. All right, so printing scriptlet allows you to run the code. So any code that's written in there, it runs, but then if there's anything that is returned, it prints it to the screen, basically. So this is great, and it comes in handy a lot, um, and it does basically everything the standard scriptlet does, but also outputs the return value, or anything that is returned, to the screen. All right, but printing scriptlets, there is a bit of security within these printing scriptlets itself. So what it does is it, it, it does something called contextual escaping, and that is to prevent something called cross-site scripting attacks. Basically, you don't want users injecting malicious code into your scriptlets um, and then having that uh, basically hack your website. You don't want any of that. So what printing scriptlets does is it contextually escapes any malicious code so that it, it cleans the code basically, it sanitizes the code. But sometimes you want to inject code anyways, so sometimes it's not your users injecting code, it's you yourself as a developer injecting that code, and you know the code is not malicious in any way, it's very safe. So AppScript also provides another type of scriptlet called the force printing scriptlet. And basically what that does is it's exactly the same as the printing scriptlet, but there is no sanitization involved at all. It basically just prints whatever is returned and it doesn't do any contextual escaping. All right, that's enough talk for now. We're gonna see examples of these later in the video. But the top four methods that we have for today are create template, evaluate, create template from file, and get content. So we got a lot of stuff to learn in this video, so let's get right into it in the code. All right, I'm gonna be as quick as possible because I know there's a lot of things to cover in a short amount of time, but I know that this can be somewhat of a confusing topic when you first learn it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. All right, so let's first create our template. All right, so if you remember when we created HTML outputs before we would access our HTML service and then we would say create HTML output, right? Very simply, uh, in fact, we would do this one, and then we would just inject our HTML code right within the first argument position, and that would return for us HTML output. We can also do that with a template. Um, so if we click this right here, you can see that it's going to return for us an HTML template, which is not an HTML output, but we will, um, we will mitigate that. We will solve this problem shortly. All right, so again, if you remember HTML templates, allow us to include uh, scriptlet tags within our HTML. So let's do that right now. So let's first just say h1, and then we'll close that h1 off. And then inside of there, let's say that we wanted to print today's date onto the screen. So to do that, you're going to need JavaScript. And luckily, we now have a template where we can inject JavaScript right in our HTML code. So to do that, we're going to need our scriptlet tags. So let's include those. All right, but if you remember, we want to print this date onto the 
onto the screen, right? So if the way we have it right here, we just have our standard scriptlets, and this is just going to run whatever we, whatever we write in here. So if we say new date, say, this is just going to run it, but it's not actually going to return it within these two H1 tags. So to do that, we need our printing scriptlet, and we just include an equal sign right there. All right, guys, so if we, uh, if we save it and we just refresh the page now, it's not going to do anything because, again, the return value is not a supported return type. We are returning an HTML template, and what we need is an HTML output. So to do that, we just need to simply tack on the extra method evaluate, and then this will return for us an HTML output. All right, so let's save it now, and we will refresh the page, and there we go. We have our date uh, displayed right on our web application. So that is pretty darn cool. This is pure JavaScript right here, and we just put it right into our HTML. Alrighty, so that is pretty dang cool, but again, this is only going to accept a uh, very simple HTML. Um, you wouldn't want to have a huge file and put it all within one line, within one string. So usually what I do uh, is I create a template from a file. So I use this method called dot create template from file right here so this will take in a file name as a string and I have a, a file right here so if I now say index just like I did with the create h or create uh, HTML output method uh, I'll just say index and then I'll say evaluate and then what that will do is when I refresh the page it will serve my file right here. And as you can see, there are no scriptlets in this page currently, but it still works and that is okay. So usually I'll just default to this method every single time I write in HTML uh, because if I later wanted to add some scriptlets, I already have it in a template uh, form right here. All right, so now let's start showcasing some of these scriptlets. All right, so let me just first prove that these scriptlets are indeed server-side JavaScript. So I'm going to add these two tags right here. Again, it's a angle bracket and then a question mark. This is app script way of saying this is a scriptlet. All right, so let me just now say console.log test. All right, so if I hit save now, and it's kind of cool too because you can tell that these are indeed scriptlets. They are colored blue. And before I added this, if you remember, it it italicizes the text. All right, so if we hit save now, if this is indeed client-side uh, code, then we should see test appearing in the console, right? So let's test that. If we have, uh, or I mean, if we refresh the page, we can see that nothing showed up, but now let's go into our server-side um, stack driving logs, and we can see that this, uh, this log just, just appeared, and now if we go into it, we can see that it did indeed log test to our server-side console. So that is pretty cool. That is just one way to verify that this indeed is a uh, server-side code that's being executed. Alrighty, so now uh, let's, let's look at something else. And that is uh, how easily this code right here, these scriptlets, integrate with um, your... App script code. So this is technically, again, this is server-side code, what we're writing in app script. This is our client-side or front-end code, which we're writing in these HTML files. All right, so you can access, so these scriptlets, you can write cool things like a spreadsheet app, and then access a spreadsheet. And again, look, look at all these really cool methods that you can use. Um, but you can also access variables within this uh, environment as well. So let's say we have a uh, constant that we declare we say name and then we say this name is David Weiss and then we save it so that so this is a global variable right it's called name now what we can do is we can output this onto the screen and again to output it we need to print it uh, so we'll add our equal sign so now this is a printing scriptlet so now if we say uh, actually, I'm also going to surround this in H1 tags just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. All right, so if we hit save, and now we go into our web application, and let me get rid of this, and I hit refresh. Now, our constant, our variable, displays on the screen, and it indeed is David Weiss, just as we declared it in our server-side code. 
So that, in my opinion, is pretty flippin' cool. All right, so now let's look at uh, another example of these scriptlets. Um, and this, when I first learned this example, I it pretty much blew my mind. So basically what you can do is you can break up your uh, JavaScript code in, in separate lines. So let me just show that to you right now. So uh, what I can do is I can say something like, um, I can create a for loop and I'll say for, and then I'll say let i equals zero. Um, and then I'll just say i is less than five, and then I'll say i plus plus. So right now I'm just going to end it with this opening curly bracket, right? And then I'll go on to the next line, and then what I'll do is I'll just start writing HTML. So this is pretty awesome because if this was to execute on its own, then this would error out, right? Because this is an incomplete for loop, right? This this really makes uh, this would error out if you just wrote this into a console. But what you can do now is you can say h1, and then you can resume your scriptlets, which is awesome. So I'm just going to print that i to the screen. And I'm going to also close out the h1 tag. And then on the last line, I'm going to complete the for loop by adding this closing bracket. All right, so again, this is pretty cool thing that you can do. And now if you hit save and you go back into your web app, you should now see the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 written out. And if you go into your, um, your Chrome developer tools, you can select say one of these and you can see that now this for loop created all of these h1 tags and it was injecting i into the content of each of these uh, h1 tags so that is pretty cool and it's a neat trick and it's uh yeah it's just it's it's a cool thing to learn all right so now let's do one more example and that is uh, including external style sheets and javascript um, uh, HTML or JavaScript external files into your HTML document. So this is uh, this is going to showcase another the last of the script tags, which is your force printing script tag. All right, so let's say that we wanted again to include this style sheet within your HTML. So traditionally, you break up your CSS and JavaScript and HTML into separate files. It just kind of organizes it a little bit more. So let's say that we wanted to include this. Again, if you try doing something like link and then, you know, rel equals style sheet, this is not going to work because it's going to ignore this. So what you need to do is you need to go back into your server side code first and you need to you need to add another function basically. And this this function is going to be named external or uh, include external file. It can be named whatever you'd like, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to return that file, I'm going to return an HTML output, and then I'm going to uh, get the content. So this is the last method that we're going to learn. It's called get content. Basically, what's going to do is it's going to return a string of whatever that file uh, output is. So if it, if if this is the file that we're going to input into this function, then it's going to basically return all of this in a string. And then once we have it in a string, and it returns right here, it'll basically just be like us inserting uh, this style sheet right in here basically just like that all right so let's now include our uh, scriptlets and again we want to print this onto our document so we need to include our equal sign and now we're going to run the function include external uh, file I believe I named it yep Ex include external on file and because again this is it's going to interact with this so it knows that this is the function that I'm talking about. And so I'm just going to say index CSS. Alrighty. So this should work, um, but it's actually not going to work. And I'll explain why in a little bit. So if now I hit the refresh button, you'll see that we have our style sheet, but it was inputted as direct text, right? So it wasn't inputted as uh, as 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 these HTML outputs, it was just inputted as a string basically onto our uh, page, and that is not what we wanted. But this is actually why uh, App Script included the force printing because right now it's it's noticing that we are injecting code 
into our HTML document and it says, whoa there, that may be malicious code. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to play it safe and I'm going to, um, I'm going to escape that. I'm going to contextually escape that and I'm just going to return it as just uh, normal text instead of HTML output. But we are quite sure that there is no malicious code within this file right here. So we're going to force print that. We're going to tell AppScript, all right, don't worry about contextually escaping it. Um, just return it as is. There's no malicious code. We are confident about that. All right, so now if we hit the save button and we hit the refresh button, now all of our code has turned to blue because that is what our style sheet indicated. And you can use this same exact method when you're trying to say input some scripts. So if you have external JavaScripts, uh, client-side JavaScripts, you can use this method as well of, in of including an external file. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of information to take in all at once, but I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to include those in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them. Otherwise, guys, if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you in the next one.